Good morning, everyone. Goedemorgen, bonjour. Welkom in Antwerpen, Belgium. Uh, at the OpenStreetMap State of the Map 2023 Conference. <laughs> Little question. Raise your hand if you had less than six hours of sleep last night. Good. Raise your hand if you started working on OpenStreetMap within the past year. Ooh. Raise, welcome. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have been working on OpenStreetMap for more than 10 years. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, I am Eleanor Denemang. I am just a volunteer who is then thrown on stage to open the conference for you. Um, I'm the room host of this room this morning which means I get to introduce our first speaker, Ben from OpenStreetMap Belgium. Please give an applause for Ben. Thank you. Um, you know, she did not know she had to be on stage when she showed up earlier. So she did very well. <laughs> um, so welcome everyone um, to State of the Map Europe 2023. Um, so uh, some of you are already welcomed yesterday. Um, but uh, I, I do see a lot of new faces, so welcome again to those um, that weren't here yesterday. Um, don't worry, uh, my introduction will be a little bit different. So um, the third State of the Map Europe, I think this one it was in um, 2011 uh, in Vienna, if I'm not mistaken. Um, here you see um, 2014, where was this again? Karlsruhe, right? Yes, yes. Um, and this one, so um, this one was the international version in Belgium. Um, I was also one of the organizers there, um, 2016. Um, and um, yeah, this sort of uh, really kickstarted the OpenStreetMap Belgium community. And this conference is one of the reasons that, that we really got started, that we were able to organize this one. So before we start, um, and away with the history, um, some practicalities, um, so uh, we have a strict code of conduct, it's on the website, you can check it. Uh, we have a designated person, if you have any problem you can talk to this person. He's also wearing a t-shirt with crew on the back, or he's supposed to. If you're not comfortable talking to this person, just any person with a crew t-shirt, talk to them. Uh, if there's a problem, um, if, if you find someone comfortable you can talk to. Um, <clears throat> please uh, go there um, if there's a problem. So speakers, um, thank you to all the speakers. Um, you know who you are. Um, so you should have received the package. Um, it's very important that you get to the room where you are speaking right before the break. Um, <clears throat> we know from experience there will be problems um, <laughs> with presentations. As you just saw, we start already a little bit late. Um, so please go to the room where you are speaking before uh, the break before so we can prepare. And very important, if you are using your own computer, please speak to one of, one of us before because otherwise you will not be live streamed. So we are live streaming this conference. Um, we, we find online participation very important. So if you want to present with your own computer, it's very important that you go to uh, one of us, we will point you to um, the people from the venue who will help you set this up. Otherwise, your screen will not be visible to those online and it will be very difficult to follow. Um, <clears throat> so, birds of a feather. Um, I found it um, necessary to introduce this concept a bit because um, many, of you, many of you already know this concept, but a lot of you don't. Um, so, it's, it's sort of an informal place where if you have a topic about OpenStreetMap that you would like to like to talk about or maybe perhaps something else, you can sign up at a, at a sheet in the, at the registration desk. Um, there will be a spot for you, but first come, first serve. Once the spots are full, um, they're full. No more room, so be quick. After this introduction, uh, the sheet will be available at the registration desk, so be quick. Um, and I think it's in the Columbus room, if I'm not mistaken. So a map, um, <laughs> finally, there's a map, I thought. 
Um, I, I thought I should put at least one map in the presentation because everyone will get nervous otherwise. So um, this is an indoor map of the venue. And I, I, I had a little bit of doubts of uh, introducing this map. Um, um, well, I didn't actually. I had doubts introducing the other map because it's not an OpenStreetMap based map, but this one is. But um, people with a trained eye can already spot some mistakes. I'm sure someone is already fixing it. So hint, hint. Um, so if you have a problem and no one else can help, find one of these t-shirts. I already mentioned this um, in, the, in the code of conduct part. Um, or you can go to the registration desk if you need help with anything. And again, speakers, go to your session the break before. So food and drinks. Um, we have uh, coffee and small snacks during the breaks. Um, we have, um, yeah, lunch, obviously. Um, but we have vegan and gluten-free options available, but you will have to request them explicitly. So either talk to one of the crew or one of the staff here at the venue. Um, drinks and coffee are just available all the time. So why is this all of this stuff available? Thanks to our sponsors, obviously. So thank you, Meta and Esri, for being our gold sponsors um, today. Uh, silver sponsors, Microsoft, Overture, and NGI at the National Geographical Institute. So I would like an applause for all of these sponsors. Bronze sponsors and supporters, also important, don't forget. Um, here, Geofabric, Geopost, Codes, and supporter sponsors. And then our production partner, I already explained this a little bit yesterday. So OpenStreetMap Belgium, Belgium, um, we are a very small team. Uh, we have a lot of members, but the, the core team um, organizing things is very small. Um, so to organize this conference, we had two options. Either we try to involve other local chapters or we try to find a sponsor before the conference and we went with the second option because we didn't have a lot of time to organize this conference by ourselves or to organize something else. So this was an excellent option for us and I have to say in retrospect it worked out very well. Um, so if you want to talk about my experiences with this, I have to say um, I, I would even hope that this would be an option for future conferences. It doesn't have to always be TomTom, -tom, but I have to say the, the collaboration was excellent. So I can only recommend this. Um, so social event, um, very important. Bring this thing because without this lanyard, you will not get food. Um, the, 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 I, I, I've been told the food truck or the location is public. So if you don't have this thing, then we will be feeding the whole of Antwerp, and that's not um, <clears throat> it's not in the budget. Uh, so there is meat and veggie available for everyone, um, and again, vegan and gluten free is available, but on demand. <laughs> and now it is. Um <clears throat> so spot the difference. Can someone see the difference? Except for the OSM Belgium flyer, and focus on the candy jar. So it's a different char, but um, the, the, the number of candies are the same. We, we knew the number before. Um, someone filled them up again, but the jar got stolen yesterday. So this is uh, our first state of the map mystery. Um, first of all, who stole the jar? Um, I, it could be the winner, because if you think about it, <laughs> That person could have stolen the jar, counted the candy. Um, so, well, let's interrogate the winner after, maybe. Uh, so, anyway, please don't steal the jar. <clears throat> so, and now introducing uh, Mike. Um, um, <laughs> I have no idea how to introduce you, I'm very sorry. Yeah, maybe introduce yourself a bit. Um, so, I will... Put up your awesome slide. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, welcome, and welcome to State of the Map. Uh, super excited to be here. Uh, I don't know uh, if people knew that I'm uh, from Spain and in Madrid, living in Madrid. This is a little early for me. Thankfully, we're starting a little late, so hopefully it'll uh, go a little, a little smoother. Um, 
So first, I'm, uh, I'm with TomTom. Tom. I run our maps content division at TomTom, Tom, building map, and I'm also the, uh, one of the founding members in, on the uh, Overture Steering Committee. Uh, and with us today, we have a couple of folks from Overture as well, so just make sure you guys are aware of who those are in case you have questions. I'm going to talk a little bit about Overture and what it's about. Uh, but we have Mark Brioli, who's uh, stand up. Mark, let everybody see you so they can talk to you. He's our executive director. And Amy Rose, stand up Amy. She's our technical director. Uh, if you guys have any questions, Amy will answer them all. She started just this month, about a week and a half ago. So she's the person to ask all the hard questions to. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so, uh, so my background. Um, you know, I started in uh, geospatial at Microsoft in 2007. Uh, we were uh, building our own map. Not a lot of people know that Microsoft also went after building their own map. We said, hey, you know what? Uh, we got all this new sensor data on the road. Uh, we got all this new AI algorithms. We can build the best map in the world. Uh, and so we went after and we started doing that. We built uh, a map of the entire United States driving all those street sidecars around. Uh, super efficient, very innovative algorithms. It was actually a ton of fun. Uh, it's what got me into the geospatial industry. It kind of, kind of got me sucked in and never left it. You know, I, I, when I first started, I was like, wow, this is so easy. Mapping is so easy. Like you just look at what's in the world and you put it on a map. How hard can that be? And then we got deeper into it a year in and then two years in and I'm like, holy crap. This is really hard. There is like different weights to display. There's this weird curvature of the earth thing that I didn't know about. Like every single thing that you could think of, we had to, you know, I was figuring out year after year, but the deeper I got, the more, uh, the more complicated it became, the more I really got kind of, just kind of got that bug and kind of bit me and I just could never, uh, never get, uh, leave it. And uh, so anyway, so at Microsoft, we're building that map. Of course, you know, Microsoft's not building a map anymore. Uh, around 2015, we finished uh, building the United States. Uh, Balmer had retired, Satya came in, uh, and we went and asked for a budget to do uh, Western Europe and Brazil. He looked at uh, what we were asking for, and he was, to say, slightly shocked, uh, actually really shocked about how much we were asking. Um, and his very next question was, how much am I paying now? We told him how much he was paying. The entire division was sold six months later. Uh, why did he do that? Ultimately, because while we built a great map, it wasn't really a differentiator for Microsoft, and he could use those incredible resources to do things that would really differentiate for Microsoft. So I left Microsoft there. I joined Amazon. Uh, most of my team uh, joined Uber. Uber took over and started building the map themselves there. Uh, and actually, you can kind of see this interesting trend that happened in the, uh, in the industry. Uh, so we, Microsoft to build a map, many of these different enterprise or companies decided, you know what? They had all the same ideas, all this great technology, all this great new AI, we're going to be able to build a map better than anyone else. And so they started trying to do it. And so, you know, in that kind of early 2010, 2015 era, everyone's trying to build their own map, but then they ultimately realized this is really hard. It turns out it's not as easy as we thought it would be. It's really expensive still. And so, uh, so what was the alternative? And now uh, Jennings put out, uh, you know, he puts out a really nice report on the uh, corporate uh, involvement into OSM. And you see right around 2018, this massive spike and just, just huge increase from all these different tech companies that start coming in and being part of OSM. Uh, why is that? And it's, uh, it's like here, it's, it's what I, you know, the kind of tagline that I like, which is it, it actually isn't, uh, it isn't possible for any one company or any individual to map the world. It actually takes the world to map the world. Now, certainly OSM knew that all along. It took all of us, you know, a decade or two to figure it out uh, and come along the ride with you. And thankfully, you guys kind of uh, were doing such a great job there. Uh, but you can really see that, uh, that the corporations and everybody started recognizing that. I left the Amazon. Uh, I left Geospatial for, uh, for several years. And uh, but I always paid attention. I was always watching what's going on, how are things happening. And then TomTom, Tom, you know, sent me a note a couple years ago and said, hey, we'd like to talk to you. Um, I wasn't really sure what TomTom Tom was up to anymore. And so I really just talked to him just out of curiosity because I'm always interested in what's happening in the industry. And they told me, hey, we're moving, we're switching our strategy. We're giving up on trying to build our map on our own. And we're going to go with an open map strategy. And we're, uh, we're going to try to do collective uh, uh, map building. 
uh, with the OSM and, uh, and the rest of the world. And I was like, that's it. It's finally happening. The, the, the industry figured it out. They can't build a map on their own. It's too expensive. It's not the right thing to do. Um, and now TomTom's figured it out, and they're willing to switch as well. And the last thing I want to do is sit on the sidelines and watch that happen. So I joined TomTom, and I kind of joined that, that, that uh, mission to really switch the way the industry is thinking about map making. And then so a year later, uh, you guys here, we end up announcing Overture, uh, you know, Microsoft, TomTom, Tom, Meta, and uh, Amazon come together and we say, hey, you know, uh, there's got to be a better way. We need something here. And everybody asks, well, why, why, why Overture? Why not just do OSM? Why aren't we just, just, just an OSM thing? Well, it turns out that there's some absolute genius things that are about OS, that OSM does, but also make it problematic for consumption and utilization of a map. So what that, what I mean by that? Well, so Steve Coast, which hopefully he uh, shows up, uh, we'll see uh, at some point. Uh, so Steve Coast, it's by the way, we're almost at our 20 year anniversary for OSM. Uh, next August, uh, openstreetmap.org was uh, registered, it'll be 20 years. Uh, Steve did an amazing job. He created something that's lasted 20 years now. Think about that, 20 years, and it's growing still in an architecture and a technical solution. And you can still map anything you need to map. That is fundamentally amazing. Like there's not very many things that you can actually point to and say that it's had that level of success, that level of stability. Uh, and that's not to say that there aren't some challenges and we know them, we talk about them all the time. Uh, ID stability, the schema, the, you know, the, the number of uh, nodes is growing out of control. Like, like we've got all the, we understand all the problems, but the reality is it's actually still working. 20 years later, you can map anything you want. And that's what's, that's what's amazing about OSM. The innovation in OSM, you can do anything. Come up with a new idea. There's no overlords. There's no uh, committee or something that says, you can't map that. We didn't create a proper schema. You can't do this because you didn't do blah, blah, blah. So any new mapper can just come in and they can start mapping something new. It's, in, it's incredibly powerful. It's also incredibly challenging for those that want to put out a map. Uh, and so that's where Overture comes in. And so what Overture is trying to do is say, you know what, instead of uh, allowing this wild west of innovation and anything to happen, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the things that have stabilized, that are kind of well known. Uh, we're going to create some structure around that schema. We will normalize the data from OSM and bring it into a structured schema-like way and then provide that to the world so that it's easier to consume, both for the members of Overture and the rest of the world. And so that's an important aspect of what Overture is doing. And I, and I think that's a good thing. It's a great partnership. We don't want to change the innovation capabilities of OSM because it'll lock it down, slow it down, and not allow it to do what it's been able to do before. But it also, for the consumption of the map, it's important that there does get to be some level of standardization, particularly for those most important features that uh, exist in the map. Now, the other thing that, that, that uh, is genius about OSM is the fact that it's a, you know, it's a community of people. There's a community of people that are looking at the map, making sure it's good, making sure it's accurate within their, their market. Um, but there is still a need for this automation, this moving faster uh, in certain ways where we don't have the same level of manually curated quality, but we can actually expand certain areas of the map a little quicker uh, where, it's, uh, where it's viable. But that's super risky. As we know right now, we're dealing right now in OSM, the, some, uh, ex, you know, uh, a growth in uh, some vandalism to our map that we're struggling at the moment to deal with with regard to some of the political tensions in the world. Uh, and so, uh, so it's important that uh, we don't enable through automation. You could imagine if we allowed someone to make an automated tool to modify the map, the amount of damage they would end up doing beyond what we're already experiencing. But in Overture, since we have uh, just a small number of trusted uh, customers or trusted uh, uh, companies, we can uh, allow them to do a bit more automation into the map that, uh, in a safer way. So that's how we think about this uh, partnership between Overture and OSM. Uh, and what, we th what, we're really, uh, what really happens then, uh, which is pretty exciting, is that, oh, and one last thing about Overture, it's not trying to build all the map content. We're not actually interested in building all the map content. What we're really trying to do is create a uh, reference 
architecture just for the most basic information. So, uh, and then add on top of that to, to continue to evolve it. But, but what we're really looking for is this, you take the physical world, we want one standard for how we represent the digital world. And that's a, also a very, very unique thing. So today, what we have is we have many different maps that come from Google, TomTom, uh, Tom, here, OpenStreetMap. And when you decide to use one of those maps, that map is that world. You live in that ecosystem. You live in that world. That is the vertical that you have to, you have to do your mapping. Your data attaches to that. You can't go over and communicate to data and other content in the other map. It's in a different schema. It's attached. It's got a different view of the world. It's insane that we still live in a world in, in geospatial industry today. We still live in a world where we can't have devices communicate with each other in a common language and with a common understanding of the physical world. That is a huge problem, and it's caused a huge challenge for us to innovate in the space. So what Overture is also doing is trying to help solve that. So we're basically saying, let's bring the collective world together on the base part of the map that nobody actually thinks is necessarily important to differentiate for. And then that way, that creates this standard understanding of the world. Once you do that, we bring in not just the OSM community, we bring in the collective resources of all these companies to also share and work on that same base infrastructure and that base map. And when you have the collective resources of the world working on a singular map, that thing will grow exponentially faster than any one company can do. And so now, instead of having a single company try and own a map, we're saying that we're all part-time map makers and we're gonna work on a map together. And we're gonna bring the resources together and that's gonna explode what we can ultimately do to basically produce a map. And so, uh, so that's the exciting part of Overture uh, that, that's happening. The other thing I wanted to kind of talk to, and uh, I know they're throwing me this two minutes, but I think they stole some of my time. So I'm gonna go slightly over, but I'll try to save some time. Uh, but, but yeah, so, um, but so okay. So the OSM community, I was, you know, I, I really wanted to talk a little bit about the OSM community. And I wanted to tell you something. I was talking to my wife a, a while back and explaining about uh, OpenStreetMap. And she was like, I was like, hey, so they do this and they do this map making stuff. She goes, why would anybody do that? She couldn't understand. I said, well, because they want to help the community. They want to, you know, they want to map out uh, different things that are wrong in the area. Um, they want to, you know, uh, Alan was saying he was just in, uh, you know, just out here and he saw a missing Dunkin' and Donuts and he, he, he's still mapping today and he, he adds the Dunkin' Donuts because he loves uh, donuts. Like, we're just mapping different areas and I, I gave her a few other examples. It's just, so what, what you're telling me is these are the people that when you are walking down the street, they pick up a piece of trash and throw it in the bin because they care. And I said, you know what, that's the best explanation of the OpenStreetMap community. This is a community that cares and they believe in mapping, and mapping being a fundamental humanitarian thing that is good for the world. And it's not just the community, by the way, it's corporations as well, surprisingly. It is right, corporations do care about the good for the world. We care very much about it, and we're very happy to be connected and involved in it. And, uh, and then the other thing, for those that don't know, uh, one of my more proud moments, I didn't get to be involved or a part of it, but I just being associated with you, uh, is HOT, so the humanitarian open street map uh, team. And what they did, for example, with the Turkey earthquake, I got to read about and see all the things you guys were doing related to the Turkey earthquake and the lives that were being saved real time because of the activation. So usually when these disasters have happened, you you know, you think, well, what can I do from such a far, from being so far abroad? Can I give money? But money, come on, where does it go? How does it really help? Here, all of a sudden, HOT basically pulled this community together and started mapping out real time the directions to things, infrastructure that was damaged, tents that were being put up, and, and even what tents had what things in them, what type of medical supplies or what type of patients uh, were in the given tent. And then, the, and then because they had that, the government could start running power lines to light up the tent and people could start quickly that they, you know, because the whole world's descending on Turkey and knows nothing about it, but they got an active map to route them exactly where they need to be. And minutes matter when, they, when, when something like that happens. Minutes matter to save lives. And this group in HOT saved lives. And I was just, I mean, it gives me chills to just be able to talk about it now because it's meaningful. It's a big deal. So yeah, the OSM community, you guys care. 
Uh, you care about the world. You make a map to make the world a better place. And it's, it's a very proud thing to be a part of. Uh, it's really awesome. Uh, the, the last thing I wanted to make sure I do, and I know you kind of raised your hands a minute ago, uh, but OSM is actually 20 years starting in August. It's a very meaningful date. And surprisingly, there's a huge number of veterans in the audience. Uh, it's incredible to me how often I see what, what, what a large number of veterans is. For those that have been here when OSM started, so this is 2004. If you've been doing geospatial since 2004, just stand up for me for a minute. Everybody since 2004, stand up. Come on, come on, come on, you can do it. <laughs> okay, look around the room. Notice those guys. Go talk to them. They've got credible history, incredible history. It's important that you, you know, this is a great time where you can go meet them, ask them questions, understand what's happening in, in, in OSM. Uh, it's, it's really meaningful. 